Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we have a very special episode with Eric Pratt. This is Firing Back with Eric Pratt. This is episode one. And we're going to be breaking down quite a few things today. Obviously, unless you've been living under a rock, some things have been going on in our world that are very, very crazy and very scary. And the Israelis have been dealt a very tough hand. And uh, there are some things we're going to discuss in light of uh, gun control in Israel. And, you know, it's going to be pretty interesting. So, Eric, thank you so much for joining me here today. Hey, it's great to be with you, Eric. Thanks so much for having me. Heck yeah. So, look, you know, this situation has been extremely emotional for a lot of people. I mean, obviously, war is extremely terrible. And these people came across the border, started shooting people up. And admittedly, let's just say the Israelis kind of got caught off guard. Let's just Mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, sometimes we let our guard down. And this terrible series of events is beginning to unfold and continues to unfold. And I think it's it's very important for us to to just say that the loss of life is terrible and it, it's always horrible to see these terrible things happen across the world. And when we turn on the news and we see all this death and destruction, uh, it's certainly a very terrible thing that, you know, it, it's, it's regrettable to have to see it. Sure is. But there are also things that we can learn from these situations and the Israelis you know, in terms of the way they handle their gun control or gun laws, if you will, a little bit different than the way we handle things here in the States, is it not? It it sure is, Eric. I mean, we're seeing the unintended consequences of gun control. And, and, you know, this is coming from the Israelis themselves. Uh, After the attacks, they're complaining that Things like, uh, you know, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces in the past few years have been taking rifles from civilians, confiscating them and leaving them with just one pistol each, along with 50 rounds. Of course, that means civilians were bringing the proverbial knife to a gunfight during the attack, right? I mean, they had pistols going up against terrorists who were far better armed, some of whom, by the way, apparently were armed with assault rifles that had been left behind by Joe Biden's pullout in Afghanistan. Having said that, a a pistol is better than nothing, and Israeli pistols were actually deterring the terrorists in some places. Thankfully, since uh, the, the Hamas attacks, the Israeli government has begun to slash their gun control laws. They've actually started handing out machine guns to their citizens. Uh, They're trying to make it easier for more citizens to carry firearms in public. And to that, I say bravo. Look, this is why we have a Second Amendment protection in this country. The Second Amendment says that our gun rights shall not be infringed, which means that all gun control laws are unconstitutional. They're dangerous. And maybe now Israel is learning why Our Second Amendment is so important. You know, it's it's so odd that when we look at the Israelis in general, you know, they very much are like us in a lot of ways, right? You know, they want to live free and they want to be safe just like any other person. And obviously, you know, they live in a very hostile place with people all around them that hate them so very much and everything like that. And we obviously see the results of that. So it's good to see the Israeli citizens waking up to, you know, holy crap, this is this is a, is a very real thing that we have to think about all the time. And not to sort of backtrack into a different area, but when you look at Ukraine, uh, you, the Ukrainians went through a very similar situation. They, When they thought that Kiev was, was going to be taken, they were handing out every dang rifle they could possibly give to any random person that was, that was you know, able to bear arms. Right. And they were giving out instructions on how to make Molotov cocktails. And you had grannies in the street filling up wine and liquor bottles full of uh, fuel and trying to make, you know, Molotov cocktails. So it's so um, sort of odd, Eric, that when the enemy's at the gates, uh, the government starts to sing a very different tune, do they not? Yeah. And we're, you know, you pointed out uh, the changes that were made in, in Ukraine. Uh, after the invasion there. And we're seeing that in Israel. Uh, We were just talking about some of the changes. Uh, I mentioned earlier at the time of the attack, Israelis were limited to 50 rounds of ammo for a pistol. Well, now afterwards, they've upgraded that to allowing 100 rounds per person. Now, 
you know, I would still say that's really not enough. I mean, you wouldn't want that few uh, being in a war zone. I mean, certainly uh, that wouldn't last you for an hour at the range. Uh, so, you know, you can say it's a step in the right direction. Another thing they've done, they've made it easier for people to get carry permits. But, you know, it's not in a Second Amendment kind of way. Our Second Amendment says that you have the right to keep and bear arms without infringement, without government screening, without delays. That's not the case in Israel. Uh, you have to check a few boxes and all of them can result in dangerous ways. I'll give you some examples. Uh, you know, they'll ask questions like, do you live in a specific area of Israel where the government has expanded concealed carry? They haven't done it everywhere. So if you don't live in the specific areas, then you're out of luck. You can't carry. Or have you had your phone interview yet? I mean, it could take a week to schedule that and get approval in Israel. So if you haven't done that yet, then no carry permit for you. Or did you pass your background check? Well, guess what? This week, the website for doing the application and getting your background checks crashed for long periods of time. So that's yet another delay. Now, I'm sure authorities would claim, hey, we need these background checks. It's necessary to keep bad guys from carrying guns. But come on, I, background checks didn't stop Hamas from killing people. See, that's the idiocy of firearms restrictions. Gun control doesn't work. It only endangers the lives of good people. So all to say, while Israel has taken some positive steps, they have loosened some restrictions, and let's applaud that, it's clear that they, you know, uh, they still truly don't get it. Israel, we would argue, needs a Second Amendment and shall not be infringed is what Israeli citizens should be demanding. You know, it is so wild to think about it in terms of, like in Kiev, when the uh, Ukrainians were handing out rifles to every single person that could uh, could practically carry one. And it is so odd that when the enemy's at the gates, you know, they, they change their tune quite quickly. But, you know, this ended up being a reactionary type of measure when it should have been a proactive measure, right? And the, uh, the, the Israelis are obviously quite smart. And, you know, it would seem to me that, you know, wouldn't you want to be ready and, it, it, it is very tragic when you see a loss of life that is a result of poor mm -hmm. planning or central planning. And, and you could look at a sort of if we look at gun laws or let's just say the way the way the government carries out gun restrictions or, 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 or gun laws or whatever or licensing requirements and things like that. Uh, that's very much a central planning type of thing. Right. If the website is down, well, then now you have citizens who cannot protect themselves. Now, is that to say that there are some Israeli policemen out there that are going to be checking every single person to make sure that they have their permit? I mean, I'm pretty sure the way things are going right now, if you got a gun and you live in Israel, I mean, they probably want you having it. You would hope so. <laughs> so I would imagine that that would be sort of an officer discretion type thing where they go, hey, uh, the website's down. But I mean, come on. Uh, look, if, if the enemy's at the gates, the enemy's at the gates. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's the problem with just gun control in general is that it discourages good people from doing the right thing. Now, certainly in a war situation, people might take greater risks. Uh, but th there was a based on a study done in this country that is, you know, as many as eight million people who would carry uh, don't because of uh, being scared that they would be in violation of the law. These are people who would want to otherwise carry. And so you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, the, the whole problem of complacency and waiting until there's an emergency to do something, you know, you get home insurance. Uh, you, you don't wait till after a flood or fire ravages your home uh, to get it, right? You have to get it in advance or else it's not going to cover you. Well, it's the same with our Second Amendment. It's the same with firearms. If you restrict the ability of good people to protect themselves, there's going to be consequences. And, you know, rightfully so. You mentioned Ukraine and Israel. Now that, you know, they're dealing with the threats that they're facing, uh, you know, they're slashing their restrictions. They're passing out machine guns to civilians. And while that's helpful moving forward, uh, you can't undo what's been done in the past. You know, the proverbial saying is when seconds count, the police are minutes away. Well, in the case of enemy invasion, when seconds count, the military is hours away. So 
Uh, you know, that's why they need a full-fledged Second Amendment uh, in, in Israel as well as Ukraine. Yeah, and it's not like Hamas gave a, a damn about anything going on, any sorts of laws. They just came right no. over the border and started doing whatever they wanted to do. And the, the fact is, is that evil is always going to find a way. Yeah, We can't stop evil from occurring. We can't stop evil from entering people's hearts. We can't stop them from gaining access to whatever tools they're going to perform their evil with. In fact, today, of all days, is Friday the 13th that we're recording the stream yard here today. And here we have this Hamas leader coming out and saying that today is a you know national or a worldwide day of, of jihad, you know, whatever. And when you have just such a egregious and blatantly, you know, cut and dry claim, uh, to all of this sort of stuff. It, it it really does make one think, you know, if if someone was, let's just say, going about their everyday life in some form of relative complacency, maybe it's a wake-up call for some. Maybe it's a wake-up call for people that don't think the way that you and I think, Eric, about the Second Amendment. Maybe, maybe they didn't support the idea of owning a gun. Maybe they didn't support the idea of you owning a gun. But, you know, maybe if something bad were to, let's just say, happen today, I pray it doesn't, but maybe we'll be a little bit more vigilant, a little bit more ready, a little bit more capable. And maybe we can provide that example to the world to say, yeah. hey, you know what? Yes, the world is scary. The reality of the world that we live in is that it's a dangerous and scary place full of very bad people. And we can't stop evil, but we can certainly confront it when it when it rears its ugly head. And I want to see the Israeli citizens uh, have the same Second Amendment type of rights that we have in very yes. much the same way. And uh, maybe we will see that in, in some some way, shape or form. And what wouldn't that be awesome to see an American idea spread to other cultures? And I believe it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Czechs. It was Czechoslovakia that only recently uh, had, let's just say, what would be their version of our Second Amendment. And that, that was only recently. Uh, that the Czechs had their version of, of our Second Amendment, essentially. So. Yeah, this is an idea. You know, it's not just something that works here in America. I mean, it works anywhere it's tried. Brazil, under the previous uh, president, really liberalized their... And when I say liberalized, I mean by allowing, making it easier for people uh, to carry firearms. And he was roundly attacked. You know, there was going to be shootings in the street and you know, blood was going to run and, and actually their murder rates went down uh, as a result. And, you know, and, and that's typically because while bad guys are evil, they're, they're generally not stupid and they, they don't want to confront somebody that they know is armed. Look, you know, in our country, over 90% of the mass shootings occur in gun-free zones, in places where people by rule or law are not allowed to carry. That's not an accident. That is a conscious choice that bad guys aren't shooting up police stations or gun shows. They're going where they know they're not going to find uh, any resistance. You know, one of the things I think a lot of people were shocked to learn is that before the attacks in Israel, only 2% of Israelis, uh, uh, Israeli adults uh, were armed. Now, you contrast that to our country. Some studies say that as many as 60 percent of Americans have access to guns. What a difference. I mean, you know, that's why I don't think that type of thing would work as well here. But if they were going to, uh, like I was just saying, what they would tend to do is target the gun free zones, because we've seen that happen already where, uh, you know, where they've attacked schools. Uh, where they've attacked uh, places of worship that were gun-free zones or, uh, uh, you know, or uh, bars uh, that are gun-free zones. Again, you know, they, they go after places where they know they're going to be the only one with a firearm. The American people are the ultimate deterrent. We yep. always have been. And that that's why we have this all set up the way that it is. And, you know, without getting into too much about our own government and the things that they're trying to do to us to essentially disarm us and, and to make the barrier of entry into the Second Amendment much more difficult for a, a much wider subset of people. I think it's worth noting that while everything has not been perfect and not necessarily gone the way that we'd like to see it go, I mean, look, in a post-Bruin landscape, 
maybe we see some light at the end of the tunnel. However, at, from a greater bird's eye view, America is a very safe place overall. And uh, when you look at the amount of people that live here and the amount of crime that does happen involving firearms and things like that, uh, when you crunch all of those numbers, uh, it is quite safe. Yeah. And where you tend to have the problem is where the prosecutors aren't prosecuting or they're releasing uh, criminals early. Um, or like we were just talking about places where people are not allowed to protect themselves, uh, that's where you're in the greatest danger. And no doubt, uh, you know, Hamas knows the statistics. Uh, you know, they, they knew how to prey upon the vulnerabilities uh, in Israel. And, and I was saddened to see the, the low ownership rate which uh, for firearms, which quite frankly surprised me because knowing that everybody goes and, and spend some time in the military. I, I thought it would have been uh, much higher, uh, but uh, apparently not. And yet, even then, with the firearms that that they did possess, it was really exciting to see their resiliency. And and there was great stories of of heroism. I mean, like just one of many is a gal, Ms. Lieberman, who on Saturday morning she was. Uh, up early, realized quickly what was happening. She ran house to house, waking everybody up, getting them organized with a battle plan. She got armed civilians posted behind fences and gates. They were ready and prepared for battle when Hamas came to her neighborhood. Hamas lost 25 terrorists at her particular kibbutz, whereas the Israelis lost none. So kudos to that lady. And see, that's that's what the Second Amendment is all about. That's what the citizen militia looks like. I mean, we've seen it in places uh, here, like during the Los Angeles riots of 1992 or uh, in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina devastated the city in 2005. We saw neighborhoods coming together, armed and protecting themselves from rioters and looters. And, and that's what we saw recently in is Israel as well, to the degree that they were armed, the Second Amendment uh, works, as we were just saying, anywhere it's tried. Absolutely. I think we've hit on the points really well. And what I would really like to to just kind of end, you know, today's episode with is just getting people to understand that while evil is everywhere and it's, it's really honestly sometimes impossible to truly predict where evil is going to strike, I think it's just important to recognize that there are a lot of innocent people in this conflict that are losing their lives on a, on a regular basis and innocent people who don't want anything to do with the conflict. And those are the real victims at the end of the day, the women, yes. the children, the innocents, the people who are just trying to live their lives. And, you know, whereby I know there's a lot of varying opinions about what's going on and, and everyone has their view or whatever. I think it's important to look at this conflict from a bird's eye view and just go, you know what, we should try to preserve and spare as much human life as possible in every way that we possibly can on, on all sides, right? Like whatever we can do to end this situation and keep people from hurting each other and to maybe learn some lessons from it. And I just think that what the Israelis are going through is so terrible and I really wish them the best. And I hope that yes. they, I hope they come out on top. I really do. Totally agree with what you're saying there. And, uh, you know, obviously nothing we've said here is in any man way meant to, to criticize, but it's simply to say, hey, here's the, the, the good things. Uh, let's learn from them. And then here's things that we can also learn from that can be uh, improved. Uh, you know, uh, what our founders did for us was a tremendous blessing. And as you've pointed out, it, it has blessed other countries. And uh, so, you know, we just need to keep uh, fighting. Uh, so that we don't fighting politically so that we don't lose the freedoms uh, that we have. And, and that's what we do at Gun Owners of America. I mean, we're putting pain on politicians uh, to help retain the rights and freedoms that we have, because uh, let's face it, a lot of people go to Congress, they go to the state legislatures and, um, you know, uh, they get a lot of heat from the media. You know, any shooting or tragedy is whipped up from a certain perspective. And then 
uh, the pressure is put on them to compromise and take away our rights. And so that's that's what we're fighting day in and day out. Well said, sir. I couldn't agree more. And one thing I just want to mention, y'all, look, I am the Georgia State Director here for GOA. I have a link down in my description box here. You can join GOA with my link. OK, I receive absolutely nothing in connection with your membership. This is mainly just because we want to pump these Georgia numbers up. But if you're watching this in a state other than Georgia, you can still follow my link and join in your respective state. Uh, just click down below. We would really appreciate your support. Uh, support. I can't talk today <laughs> and, and join uh, GOA and everything like that. Um, Eric, thank you so much for joining me today. I know you're a really busy guy. you got a lot going on, but um, I always look forward to having you on the channel. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And Eric, thanks so much for everything you're doing. You, you truly uh, do a lot from being a, a state director and rallying the troops in Georgia to getting the word out uh, nationwide. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, too. I hope everybody's having a great day. And thanks so much for tuning in. This has been Firing Back with Eric Pratt, episode one. Expect many more. We'll probably do these about once a month. So let me know what are some of the subjects you would like for us to cover? Uh, we'll definitely dive in as deep as we can and talk about whatever the heck y'all want to talk about. Hey, ask us some hard questions. We love to answer hard questions. Uh, maybe you're someone who thinks gun owners are crazy and that no one should have the Second Amendment. We want to know your opinions. Let us know. Uh, are we wrong? Do we need to articulate and prove a point a little bit better? Ask us a hard question. We'll be happy to answer it. Thank you all very much. Thanks so much for tuning in. Many more on the way. We'll see you soon.